Hi, I'm Ken Ellison from Ellison Machine Shop and I'm your engine guy. I have something I want to share with you here. Uh, very common occurrence in our shop when we're building an engine uh, is that we'll have customers who will do a lot of the cleaning themselves and then bring parts into us and tell us they're clean. What's more scary than that, as I guess you know where I'm heading with this already, uh, what's more scary than that is that these are the parts sometimes that we don't see. When a customer brings an engine in and we build a long block and say it doesn't have an intake manifold on it when it goes out the door because they're going to put it on themselves. Or maybe they're doing their own oil pan and timing cover and valve covers and so forth. And they clean them parts themselves and then they put them on the clean engine, the well built engine that we just done, only to find out that later on that this motor is having problems uh, because it has debris that has gotten through the engine, got made its way in the oil, tore the bearings up or so forth. That applies to when you buy a crate engine. The majority of the time when you guys go and buy a crate engine, mail order or something like that, not all of them come with oil pans and timing covers and intake manifolds. Sometimes you buy just a long block, but the majority of most people do not understand what the word clean means when we build an engine. I am absolutely certain that when I am assembling an engine, I probably wash my hands 30 to 60 times. Uh, I, I tell all my customers, um, the way I describe how clean your hand should be when you're putting bearings in an engine, your hand should be clean enough that you could put oral gel on your fingers and put it on your baby's gums. You should think about it that way because there's a lot of things inside an engine that you might not do exactly perfect, but if you put it together dirty, it's history. Uh, there, there's nothing that'll tear a motor up faster than dirt. Improper torque is not a good thing. If you get the ring end gap off a little bit, that's not a good thing. But those things won't rip a motor to shreds immediately. Getting dirt in the engine will. I have an intake manifold I want to show you. My customer brought it in to me. Thought he did me a favor. Um, he also brought a timing cover and an oil pan. And they were both kind of in the same uh, scenario, but I'm not showing them now because we've already cleaned them up. We're putting them on the engine. But it came in the door. They cleaned it. They sandblasted it. And then they primered it for me. Sandblasting is a big mistake for most people because the sand is really difficult to get out of items. Uh, it gets up inside of uh, little crevices and where things are made or where joints are pop riveted or welded or inside water jackets. And it's extremely difficult to get anything that's been cleaned with any type of an abrasive media back to the condition it's supposed to be with all that debris removed. Um, we can do it here, but we have proper cleaning equipment. We, we're not we're not using a garden hose or or a wife sink. You know we're we're using we're using industrial grade cleaning equipment. So but look at this intake manifold. This is the way it come in, and as you can see, it is ready to assemble according to my customer. He's got everything got everything taped up to keep his overspray out of it, uh, and to keep dirt out of it. You, you can see there's some dust and dirt on it now, but that's from us. Just left it laying around the shop because we we had to reclean it anyway, so it, it didn't it didn't go into the clean room. Um, down inside here, looking through here is actually this portion here isn't too bad, but flip it up in here. And down inside, down inside the runners, as you can see, is dirt is dirt coming right back out again, and that's only as far as my finger can reach. Okay, now, now look at this. This is a plate. This plate keeps the hot oil from bouncing up on the intake manifold. It keeps it, it keeps the carburetor from overheating. And it also comes off. Zoom out. Okay, now that is what our customer wants us to put on top of our rebuilt engine. Okay, now look over here. You can see, not only do you see all of the grease and carbon, that was going to go back in this man's motor, 
You can see all the sand from him sandblasting this thing. As I said, this kind of stuff is an extremely a common occurrence in my shop because people have very little idea what clean is. Uh, I, I, when I hire a new employee or I have a new guy working for me of any kind or someone helping me, if they ask me is something clean enough and want me to look at it, I tell them to go back and clean it again. Because if you have to ask me whether or not it's clean, it's not clean. And, and we have this situation all the time. Uh, when you build a motor, you want it spotless. And I just wanted to share this with you because this was a dead engine waiting to happen. And if the customer would have put this on the engine that I built, if he wasn't bringing it in to me, he had it ready to put on. He felt it was, it was, it was sufficient. And obviously it's not. And obviously this is a blown up motor and of course the machine shop gets to blame under most circumstances so anyhow guys clean means clean and that's all it means and i'm ken ellison i'm your engine guy and we'll see you soon